Welcome back to the JRM YouTube channel. I'm Jake, and today we're going to talk about intercom systems. Communication can make or break a live broadcast. It's pretty much the difference between a clean, professional show and a sloppy one where cues are missed, cameras are late, and nobody really knows what's happening. But here's the issue. Traditional intercom systems are expensive. Systems like ClearCom, Riedel, or RTS can cost anywhere from ten dollars to $60,000 just to get started. And for a lot of schools, small colleges, and independent production, production companies, that's simply not realistic. So today, I'm going to show you how we handle intercom at JRM Video, using a system that costs a fraction of the price and still gives us broadcast quality communication on every show. And that system is Unity Intercom. Before we get into setup, let's talk about why intercom matters. When you watch a good broadcast, the director is constantly calling camera shots, replay cues, graphics, audio, etc. There is so much communication going on and it's crucial that everyone can hear and understand. If the communication falls apart, then the show falls apart. But when intercom is smooth, camera cuts are clean, replays are perfect, camera ops know exactly what shot they need before they get it. And the show just looks so much more professional. So even if we're working on a budget, intercom is still something we will never compromise on. Now the gold standard wireless systems are amazing. They're rock solid, low latency, and built for stadiums and network television. But like I said, the price can easily hit fifteen dollars to $60,000 once you add in base stations, wireless antennas, belt packs, batteries, charging docks, cables, and installation. So for a local company doing high school, college, and pro streaming, that's not where we want to spend our money on. Now, I have spent hours and hours and hours researching intercom systems a few years back, and Unity Intercom is the solution that takes a different approach. Instead of hardware, belt packs, and dedicated intercom cabling, Unity runs over your existing IP network and is 100% software based. It also works on Mac, Windows, iPhone, Android, and a whole plethora of tablets. You pay for one server license and one time license per user, and that's it. There are no subscriptions. I'll dive a little more into the pricing a little further into the video, but for now, let's talk about how Unity works and how we use it on our production. Big picture on how Unity works. You start with the server. There's three different ways you can run the server. And option one, that's hosting your own server at a central location. Option two, that's hosting your own server on site or inside your production vehicle. And option three is using Unity Cloud, where you essentially rent the server from Unity. They handle the hosting and you just utilize their server. What we do is option one, and that's host a server at a central location. And for us, that's in our warehouse slash office. The Unity server is just software that's running on a Mac mini and it's powered on and running 24 seven. Another big thing to mention that is if you choose to host your own server, make sure you can have dedicated hardline internet connection. We have our Mac mini right next to our internet router, so it's simple to have internet running straight into it. Now for me, I don't consider myself an IT expert. I understand the terminology and can handle the basics, so I'll admit I was a little hesitant when I found out we had to host our own server, but really it's just a software application developed by Unity that we're just running on a Mac mini. So now that we covered the server, there's only one more part, and that's the end user. This can be camera operators, producers, directors, talent, PAs, whoever you want to have access. But from here, the user, aka the client, will install Unity Intercom, whether being a phone, laptop, desktop, or tablet. And from there, they will input the server information. Typically, it's just the IP address and the port number, followed by user-specific name and password. And if all that information is entered correctly, then you're in. And now once logged in, you'll see a big yellow talk button followed by several buttons located around the top half and bottom half of the circle. The top channels in the green are your talk channels. These are the channels where your audio will go every time you talk. The bottom blue buttons are your listen channels, and you can listen up to six different channels. We have these channels separated by cameras, sideline, program, and producer. All of these groups are custom and assigned all within the Unity server application, so you can have full control over users' talk and listen channels. Our standard use for Unity is our director talks into a microphone at their workstation here in the broadcast truck, and they have a mic going into a USB interface, and using Unity client on a Windows machine, they talk to the camera group to call camera shots. And our system producer usually log into the sideline in production so they can communicate with the sideline talent for hits, along with the Red Hat for TV timeouts. And I'm the producer, so I'll talk in the production group, which is just a master group that everyone can uh, talk and listen into. Now, the best part about Unity for our end users is it's completely wireless. 
all camera operators and sideline personnel are able to use either headsets that we supply or they can use their AirPods or other wireless headsets. Now we keep a bunch of lightning to headphone and USB-C to headphone adapter cables in the truck here at all times so crew can quickly grab a headset and connect it to their phone. Now the best part is it scales instantly. If we add cameras, then we just log in another device. No extra hardware is needed to make it happen. Now jumping in depth to the wireless a little more, yes, it is 100% wireless. 99% of our camera operators or field users log in using cellular signals, so it's not much different than a cell phone call. And all users can connect using Wi-Fi or cellular. Now I'm going to backtrack a little bit and go over option two and three so you can determine the best use for your case. Now option two, uh, it was hosting your own server on site or inside your production vehicle. We tried this earlier on and failed more often than not. The simple reason being is internet. Basically when you're hosting the server on site it's only connected to your local area network. We would place a Wi-Fi router in a press box or a gym and our camera operators would have to be able to reach that Wi-Fi router and connect to our network. Then they could successfully log into Unity and inside of a gym, there wasn't too much of an issue, but outside of a football stadium, there was a pretty big issue, and that signal just wouldn't reach from the press box down to the field. We even tried using large-scale Wi-Fi antennas and boosters to place it on field level. Uh, it, wouldn't, it would work during testing, but as soon as we had the stadium filled up with fans on the 2.4 signal, it would just get too crowded and cause issues connecting. This option might be best inside of a gym or place of worship, any small venue where your end users can just connect directly to your LAN. Now option three is renting the server from Unity called Unity Cloud. And this essentially takes all hosting responsibilities away from you and every user would just log in to their server. It's really not much different from option one except cost and responsibility. You would not need a Mac Mini to run the server, but you would end up paying a little more. And they have great pricing options available based off per week, per quarter, or year. So if you really only need it one time, then you can just pay for it for the week based off how many users are needed. It's pretty straightforward and all listed on Unity's website. But as I mentioned earlier, we use option one, and that's hosting our own server. And the reason why is because we have two separate broadcast vehicles and crews on a Friday or Saturday during the football season. So we have up to 20 to 30 people using Unity across two different shows and two different physical locations. So it's much easier to have all our Unity users to log into our server remotely. You may ask how we have all these users logged in and work between two different shows at once, and that's managed groups. You can basically make multiple groups per production or show, and we have three groups separated by trailer, van, and pop-up. And the user will then select which group they want to talk to, so van is our B crew, and all of their crew, they would select van under groups. Really cool feature about this is we can talk amongst groups. We started doing these game break check-ins between each crew so we can get a live score update from a different game. And we would communicate these check-ins by talking across each other's groups. Now there's a lot of cool features you can do with Unity and it's really proven to be helpful in multiple different areas. Let's dive into pricing. Now the rough cost, Unity server license, base license, $600. Unity user license is roughly $100 per user. Note that the $600 base server license does include three users and one group. So if you need more than three users, plan to pay an additional $100 per extra user. Now, headsets can range pretty much any price. We use cheap, lightweight PlayStation single ear gaming headsets. At the time, I think they were like $12 each. You'll need a Mac Mini if you choose to host your own server using option one. Note that the host server software only runs on Mac. We just bought a used Mac Mini online for pretty cheap. So for a full eight person intercom setup, you could expect to pay between $1,000 to $1,500 total compared to $15,000 and up. So it's definitely a massive difference between something like Clearcom or Riedel. Now here's some best Unity practices to get the best overall experience that we found works well for us. Now use a wired ethernet on your server. If you have to use Wi-Fi, stick to like a five gigahertz only, don't use 2.4, uh, and always keep your devices charging. There's nothing worse than having a camera ops phone dying in the fourth quarter of a football game. Now my honest opinion on Unity, it works well and it's affordable. Unity can have slightly more latency than a dedicated hardware than a dedicated hardwire system. There's really not much that we've noticed, but it's worth mentioning. I'd say maybe one second, if that. And maybe the UI is functional, but it's not fancy. It, it pretty much does what it needs to do. So 
Some unity cons, uh, network quality matters. A bad Wi-Fi signal or cellular signal can lead, to lead definitely to dropouts. Very rarely will we go to a venue with bad cell servers, but it's something that we have to be mindful of. But for 99% of high school, college, and local broadcast work, Unity delivers broadcast level communication at a price point almost anyone can afford. So it's not just good for the cost, it's just genuinely good overall. So, well, if you want a step-by-step -step tutorial, including server installations, channel, channel configuration, and audio routing, I would check out Unity Intercom's website. They have a bunch of very helpful videos to get started and even to give you guys a rough idea. So, so make sure to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and check out all the other behind the scenes breakdowns on how we provide live sports broadcasts here at JRM Video. So thanks for watching and we'll see you guys in the next one.